Hi, I hope you're having a great day. Well, today we're going to talk again about intermittent fasting. And as we keep getting more and more unbelievable transformational changes that's happening to people's health from across the world. Yesterday we had a case from Czechoslovakia that came in of an 82-year-old woman who had a niggling left pain in her knee for the longest time. She had been to every doctor possible, every nutritionist possible, and she had tried everything under the sun from creams to ointments to cortisone injections and you name it. And she started intermittent fasting about 14 days ago. And yesterday she sends us a message talking about how her pain has completely vanished. <clears throat> Along with that, her energy levels have improved. So why are we going on about intermittent fasting? Because in my line of work, we're about tired of you know trying to convince people from around the world that fad diets don't work. And the only thing that can really work and change the face of healthcare, change your weight, whatever it is, be it emotional, mental, physical, your fitness levels, your body image issues is lifestyle. Because it is our lifestyle, our individual lifestyles that determine how any diet is going to suit our body, how any exercise program is going to suit our body at all. It's not the kind of exercise you do. It's not the kind of food that you eat. It is your lifestyle that creates the internal environment for you, for your food to be digested and assimilated, and your external environment around you that allows you to stay fit and healthy. <clears throat> so I've been researching more and more and more into this because there's a whole skeptical market. And of course, for the right reasons, because intermittent fasting, dry fasting is threatening many industries, right from the, right from the snack industries to the food, because people are eating lesser. And that's not a good thing for most businesses that are into food. People have realized that they can survive on two meals in a day and not only just survive on them, their medical parameters are looking better. We have type 2 diabetes getting completely reversed. We have doctors, allopathic doctors pulling their patients off medicine because their sugar levels are now completely under control. We have high blood pressure coming down with people who are fasting. We have inflammatory levels, which is measured by something called your CRP. This is your C-reactive protein, which is an inflammatory marker in the human body. It's not a conclusive marker, but it can give you signs of the amount of inflammation that someone has in their body. And what are some of the inflammatory diseases that we're looking at today, right? From cardiovascular, heart, stroke, diabetes, cancer, back pains, all of these are inflammatory diseases, which means that it is caused by inflammation in the human body. So I had a look at the Harvard Medical uh, School and I've started pulling out research to see what Harvard thinks about intermittent fasting. And we have some super interesting research coming out of that. In 2014, they put mice through a study of intermittent fasting and the parameters that came out were astonishing. Yes, it wasn't a human being, it was mice. But if you really go to see and we use our common sense today, most pharmaceutical drugs most cosmetics, unfortunately, are all tested on mice. And if they're suitable for mice, as per several FDA guidelines, it is suitable for human beings. So what did they find at Harvard Medical School when they did intermittent fasting on rats? They found out weight loss happened and it stayed off. Sustainable weight loss, a drop in blood pressure, high blood pressure, a drop in total cholesterol, including the bad cholesterol, and a drop in blood sugar levels, which means your, the way insulin behaves and the amount of high blood sugar levels that you have in your body. And of course, there's always a disclaimer that it is yet, you know, we need more research to prove this on human beings. Let's understand food and how it's working for your diabetes in your system. We eat our food, we digest it, it comes down into your intestines, there are enzymes that break down your food. These enzymes are produced in your digestive system and your pancreas to break down your food into small molecules which then squeeze between your gut lining into your blood and your blood carries all these food molecules to all of your different organs and tissues and cells in the human body. <clears throat> now what happens is when we eat carbohydrates, carbohydrates break down into sugar. Our pancreas produce insulin so we can take this excess sugar and store it in your cells and your cells use it to break down energy when we don't have enough of energy. That's the perfect mechanism of the human body. Now when we intermittent fast, what falls is our insulin levels which is why it makes it fantastic for diabetics. But remember, if you're highly diabetic, you want to do it under supervision because you want to make sure that your insulin levels don't go too low and you go into hypo. So everything under supervision if you're highly diabetic. But coming back to the point, so when we're intermittent fasting, our insulin levels drop. And when your insulin levels drop, your fat cells in your cells are forced to release the sugar that is stored in the cells for energy. So that's how you lose weight. You don't lose weight because your calorie restriction and all of that stuff, maybe a little bit of weight, 
But like I always say, never use intermittent fasting as a weight loss tool. Intermittent fasting, the pleasant side effect will be weight loss eventually. But this is what's really happening because your insulin levels drop. You're allowing your fat cells to release basically the sugar that's stored into the cells as fat and it breaks down into energy. That's how exactly it works. So your insulin falls. Now, there are more studies, medical back science, when it looks into intermittent fasting, how they have also noticed in controlled studies a drop in your total triglyceride levels. We need to understand in your total cholesterol profile, we are not really concerned about your total cholesterol. And today, more and more science is proving that LDL, HDL, all of these stuff, all of this are not deciding parameters for your heart health. Okay, you want to look at your triglycerides. You want to look at a ratio between your LDL and your HDL. Your LDL is your good cholesterol. Your, your, and your L, sorry, your LDL is your bad cholesterol. Your HDL is your good cholesterol. You want to look at your ratio. You don't want to look at your total cholesterol. It is very easy to prescribe a statin looking at your total cholesterol. But you want to look at a ratio. You want to look at your triglycerides. If your triglycerides are in place, the ratio of your LDL and HDL is decent, which means your HDL is better than your good your bad cholesterol. Most doctors will agree today that you can use lifestyle, maybe give the patient about three months to change their lifestyle to improve this ratio before just blindly medicating them on the total cholesterol level. Well, so we saw a decrease in medical back research on intermittent fasting on a decrease in TG, which is your triglycerides, your total cholesterol, your LDL, again, your glucose. But something that's fascinating that is showing across most medical journals, the effect of fasting on inflammation. And this is important. Inflammation is falling in the fasting phase. And like I said, what are the inflammatory triggers? Basically, what, what can they cause? Cancers, diabetes. So am I trying to say that fasting is going to take away your cancer? Am I trying to say that fasting is your medicine that should replace your doctors, replace your medicines, replace your chemo? Absolutely not. I'm trying to show you the wisdom of how fasting harnesses the own power of your body to heal you. Every human being out there knows that the human body has the power to heal. Take a knife right now or fall and bruise yourself, hurt yourself a little bit and you will see the beauty of how your body has that immense power to heal your wound. Okay, of course we need doctors, of course we need medicine, we need all of this. I'm not talking about this as a replacement. What I'm trying to say is we need to instill in our subconscious, in our belief systems, in our mindsets, in the mindsets of our children that the human body is designed to heal. We should never tell our children that doctors are out there to heal you or nutritionists are out there to heal you or food is out there to heal you. No, we need to teach them that your body will heal you. And yes, we need doctors and good food and all of that stuff to complete the process. But if we make them believe that their body will heal them, they will not jump to every quick fix pill that exists out there as they grow up. Coming back to intermittent fasting, we looked at science-based medicine journals and pull out data and the key points of how intermittent fasting has a positive impact on anti-aging. Now, like I said, most of us are aging far beyond at a much quicker pace than we should because of environmental toxins, stress, lack of sleep, free radicals in the human body. But when we fast, we allow our body to slow down that aging process. Then you have cancer, the positive impact on cancer. Now, this is a big one because we've seen how certain patients who are strong enough to go through chemo, who intermittent fast, how their side effects are reduced. Now, again, do not do this without supervision because most cancer patients have weight loss and we don't want to lose further weight when we're going through chemo. So again, you need to assess the patient and decide whether intermittent fasting can be done in a supervised and in a sensible way with that patient. But yes, it has a positive impact on even your immune system. Our immune systems are known to grow when we are in a fasting phase, which is why, again, it's common sense. Look at nature, look at human beings, look at animals. The moment we're sick, the first thing that gets cut is our appetite because our body shuts down our digestive system to use the energy, which is usually used for digestion, to heal the human body. And that is why our appetite is cut when we're sick. But we start force feeding the patient and putting more and more food into them, compromising the natural healing process of the human body. So we need to understand the effect when it comes to immunity, cancer, cognitive function. And this is my favorite because all of our, our patients who have Alzheimer's, dementia, Parkinson's, by restricting their calories, not through a starvation mode, by letting them fast as much as they can without discomfort, we have noticed a complete improvement in their cognitive behavior. And yes, 
Science-based medicine is also showing the impact of fasting on cognitive behavior. So this could range from people who have Alzheimer's, dementia, or Parkinson's, to children who have autistic disorders, ADHD, and anything that involves the neurological functions of the brain, again done in a supervised manner. Hypertension, the positive impact of fasting on hypertension and metabolic syndrome. And one of the most beautiful parts is you should look at your children after they stop breastfeeding and they stop waking in the night to feed. Usually children are supposed to have early dinners and then they wake up and most children don't feel hungry in the morning. They already have a fasting mechanism built into them. We should respect that because human growth hormone, which is known as HGH, which is responsible for your child's growth, not just musculoskeletal, muscle, brain, everything. That's get, that gets produced in a fasting phase, which is why there are a lot of athletes out there today who are generating natural HGH, which is human growth hormone, by fasting, eating, and training. So you see there's a lot of science when it comes to this. Now the beauty of this is it uses a little bit of common sense, and like I always say, it doesn't have to suit everyone. If it suits you, do it. For some people it could be 12 hours, for some people it could be 14, 15, 16. Don't let the world take the concept which is natural to us and make it into a fad diet. There are people who are saying, oh, fast for 16 hours, 14 hours, 22 hours. No one has the intelligence but your body to tell you how many hours you should fast. Some days you may fast for 14 hours, some days for 12, some days for 15, some days for 21. If your body needs you to be in a fasting phase for longer, it will allow you and tell you to do that. If it doesn't need you to be in a fasting phase for a while, it will help you break your fast by creating hunger pangs. That means it's asking for nutrition, feed your body at that point. Don't let your mind be attached to some number that all your friends are trying to do and trying to tell you that 16 hours is good or 18 hours. It is up to you and your body and that is the beauty of intermittent fasting. It is up to you. It doesn't have to change your life like a diet on a piece of paper does. You can go out, you can socialize, you can start intermittent fasting at 1 in the morning, at 12 midnight, at 9 in the evening, at 6 in the evening. It is up to you. And there are so many ways that you can do it. If you travel a lot, you can be the busiest person on the planet, but you have the ability to fit in intermittent fasting into any cycle that suits your body and your lifestyle. So anyone out there today who's suffering from arthritis or any of these diseases, and if you reach a point where you've given up and there's nothing else that you can do, I would, ex I would encourage you, I would plead with you to try intermittent fasting in a supervised way. It doesn't mean deprivation. It doesn't mean starving. It, yes, it requires commitment, discipline. It requires you to give up some of your comforts, you see? Some of your comforts, but believe me, you get through three days of intermittent fasting, it is going to change some aspect of your life. And we don't even know. It's become difficult to predict how many aspects of your life it can change. We have people who have gone off coffee completely, people who have broken their caffeine addictions, people who have broken their sugar addictions, because we believe that intermittent fasting will reset your body at a cellular level. It will also reset your mind. We have people who are intermittent fasting and sleeping deeper and longer at night. And we can understand the correlation. We're not surprised. The cleaner your body is, the better you sleep at night. It's as simple as that. We have people who are able to meditate better when they're intermittent fasting. And it's as simple as that. You don't have all your energy going to break in some veg, vegan, non-vegetarian meal that you've just eaten. All that, digest all that energy is being used for your mind, for your emotional health. This is something natural. This has existed in every religion that we have. It's existed since the start of evolution. And all we're trying to do is go back to something which is inexpensive and free without trying to make it a fad, without trying to make it a social fad. Do it. It's changing people's lives at the age of 92, 93, and 94. It's changing the lives of children. We have so many children today who are no longer hungry in the morning and we manage to convince their parents, don't feed them. And parents have just come back with the best things to say about their children's concentration levels at school, shooting up, hyperactivity, reducing their energy levels, and them making better food choices when they move into their building phase. So you have nothing to lose. All you need to do is try it. And yes, you find a whole world out there now trying to bring it down and put on intermittent fasting. We should understand if something's working in this world and something's going to threaten a lot of industries out there, People will do anything to bring it down. People only try to bring down things that work. And of course, there's a safe and an unsafe way to do it. There is always a safe and unsafe way to do it. We're asking you to be sensible, use, do it with supervision, seek advice. There are many videos that we've done, so don't find the easy way out and just keep asking questions. Watch the videos, 
learn, understand the do's and the don'ts and make this your lifestyle because I can promise you, if there's anything that's going to change your skin, your hair, your weight, your inflammation, the way you feel about yourself, the beauty is the testimonials that come from around the world, people that we feel great, our exhaustion has disappeared, we feel energetic, we feel fantastic. What matters at the end of the day is how we feel before we go to bed. Have a great day, everyone. Until next time, eat smart, move more, sleep right, and breathe deep.